thank you, Chairperson, and Council um, Garrity for this opportunity to speak today. Quality of life is our economic engine here in Fredericton. People are attracted to our city for its urban forest, its parks and trails, its universities, clean air, and the lack of pollution from heavy industry. Just last month, in addressing a doctor shortage here in Fredericton, the President of the Fredericton Chamber of Commerce, Andrew Steves, highlighted the following. Quote, attracting investment, entrepreneurs, and talented professionals and skilled trades people is based largely on the quality of life and amenities the community has to offer. And excellent health care is at the top of the list, unquote. So I am here today as a concerned citizen to detail the certainty of air pollution from shale gas development and to warn that if it is allowed to proceed in large regions surrounding our city, there will be a large negative impact on our quality of life here in the city of Fredericton. We need to impose a ban on shale gas at the municipal level and then pass resolutions for the province to do the same. Each member of your committee has been provided a copy of the detailed presentation with the reference material cited, so my talk will just be a short summary today. Shale gas development requires a large scale industrialization of our farmland, forests, fishing lands, and hunting lands. Distribution pipelines and compressor stations along the way must be built to transport the gas to market. <coughs> Shale gas development blankets distant communities downwind with known carcinogens and asthma causing smog. Fredericton, because it's surrounded uh, in all directions by exploration license areas, will become a sink for heavier than air toxins that travel long distances up to 300 kilometers from shale gas wells to diesel emissions from truck traffic, storage tank emissions, and compressor stations along the pipelines. What do all of these chemicals have in common? They are all heavier than air, they all cause cancer, and they are all found in toxic levels in the air downwind from shale gas operations. Benzene is one of the signature gases from drilling sites and compressor stations. And this chemical has been directly linked to various blood cancers, including leukemia and non-Hodgkin's leukemia. I want to take a few seconds to paint a picture of what heavier than air really means. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air. That means it will sink to the floor. So imagine that I have a glass of water, and I put it on the podium or your table, and I drop a piece of dry ice in it. Dry ice is frozen carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide gas created will then mix with water vapor and pour out of the glass, then down onto the table, down onto the floor, and then spread out over this entire room. Imagine that these are the volatile organic compounds in ground level ozone traveling long distances before settling into the valley of Fredericton. Air pollution is a certainty for Fredericton. New air pollution and health studies provide a clear warning. Taken individually, any of these single reports is quite troubling. But when you look at this new information together, it is truly frightening. The data confirms that if shale gas operations are allowed to proceed around Fredericton, that it will be a significant threat to our human health. Here are some examples. Truck traffic alone causes significant air pollution because the amount, amount of water used in fracking. Each well has 1,800 to 2,600 truck drive-by. <coughs> An eight-well pad site has 14,400 to 20,800 drive-by. Two, some areas of once pristine rural Wyoming now have smog levels equal to Los Angeles. Three, oil and gas operations in the Dallas-Fort Worth region emit more smog-causing volatile organic compounds than all the trucks, cars, buses, and other mobile sources in the area combined. 60% 40%. Four, Texas hospital records in six counties with some of the heaviest shale gas drilling. Quote, children in the community ages six to nine are three times more likely to have asthma than the average for that age group in the state of Texas, unquote. Five, Baylor University's reports published in 2009 show that childhood asthma rates in the Tarrant County area of the Barnett Shale were more than double the national average. Six, the same six counties in Texas with rising rates of invasive breast cancer also have the highest counts of compressors, separators, tanks, and the above ground points of emission from shale gas. Looking at the map of over 254 counties in Texas, 
quote, you will notice that the counties in which you have the heaviest drilling activity perfectly matches the jump in breast cancer rates. This is a state where the average breast cancer rates are actually dropping. Seven, a three-year health study released in March 2012, quote, calculated higher cancer risks for residents living near to the wells as compared to those residing further away. Benzene is a major contributor to lifetime excess cancer risk from both scenarios. And finally, number eight, the final and the single largest health threat is climate change. Because of all the methane, over 4% of all the natural gas extracted is lost in the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is now moving past 400 parts per million, and our children will see carbon dioxide levels move past 550 parts per million by 2050. The latest climate models, March 2012, predict that temperatures could rise by 3 degrees Celsius, not the end of the century, but by 2050, based on mid-level emissions. So we really have to ask how we will attract and retain doctors when they find out Fredericton is surrounded by shale gas licenses. They will listen to the facts. They will listen to the New Brunswickers whose property sales have already fallen through because the buyers found out that the land is on or near shale gas lease areas. This is happening here in New Brunswick now. And they will listen to residents here in Fredericton who are voicing concerns about the health of their children, about the risk of increased asthma and cancer, about the impact on their property values, and about their quality of life. I appeal to your obligation to protect the health of our children, young people, and the elderly. I appeal to your obligation to protect our air. I appeal to you to protect our quality of life here in Fredericton. So I ask you to hear today that your committee allow our group, Friends of UMB Woodlot, to bring this information forward to City Council. Or I ask any individual councillor here today if they would exercise their right under the City of Fredericton Administrative Procedural Bylaw 82 and also exercise their obligation under the Municipalities Act in New Brunswick and immediately put this issue on the agenda of City Council. Because of the certainty of air pollution from shale gas development, the City of Fredericton has only two choices. One, ban shale gas development at the municipal and the union of the municipalities in the Brunswick level in order to put pressure on the provincial government to do the same. Or two, build a dome <coughs> over the city. I believe a ban would be cheaper and more acceptable to the citizens in this city. And we would be in good company. Minto, Sackville, Hampton, and Sussex Corners have already passed a ban or moratorium. And a breathtaking 154 municipalities in New York State have passed the ban of moratorium or in the process of doing so. I'll upload my keynote presentation to SlideShare on the web. To find it, simply Google the words SlideShare and Woodlock. Thank you for this opportunity today. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much, Mark, for the report and uh, your ongoing uh, work in this field. Um, the city is very concerned about quality of life, um, with uh, especially about drinking water. We consider ourselves a very uh, environmentally friendly uh, city, and um, you know any concerns that would uh, <coughs> threaten this, uh, you know, would cause us. So, so um, the. Council has already come up and said to the mayor that uh, you know we're not supportive of uh, shale gas development inside the city this time, and we are following uh, shale gas development in ways we can through our staff. Uh, we are uh, you know, watchful of what the province is doing and, and the steps that they're going to be taking. And so, um, uh, you know, uh, the city feels that uh, you know it's on top of this issue. And so, uh, and council is uh, very aware of the issue as well. So, um, I have no problem in moving a recommendation to approach the province and ask them for a moratorium on shale gas development uh, uh, if uh, we thought that would advance the file. Uh, so, um, I'll leave that uh, on the table uh, on, and uh, for further uh, discussion uh, of the committee. <coughs> Thank you. I'm not a member of the committee, so I can't be discussing it, but I certainly agree because I'm hearing from my fellow colleagues here. 
and I know the mayor has spoke very strongly about this in the past, and I think it is time that council, uh, we do move in the direction and show our support for the mayor and his recommendations and the statements that he's made. When we're looking at the two very basic necessities of life, our uh, air and our water, and the possibility, even the possibility of them being affected by that, I think that we cannot act. I think that we do need to move forward with it, and I would support, um, if I could as well, which I can't, but I would support a motion of council, okay, the council level. Council Grant. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and Mark, thanks for bringing the information forward. I think, I think it's important that, uh, you know, we hear all sides of, of the fracking story, and we get all the best information we can um, as we start to grapple and deal with the, uh, <coughs> the issue at hand. So that we fully understand. Again, I'm not a member of the committee either, and I can't advance this forward at all. But uh, I am concerned about uh, fracking and, and its effects. I'm a friend of the same as Councilor Kirby. 